Da da da. How was my dribble? Da 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 da. All right, we're waiting. We both said it tomorrow. Let's find out if we're right. And uh, we're wrong. Whoa! <laughs> whoa! 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 Uh, I'm I'm feeling the same feelings. I'm sure you are. Well, very uh, interesting. Oh, well, Nick, uh, I I'm not sure about this pick to be honest. Runes of Sarah's up against Myungshik. I don't know, man. Um, I mean, if you were to just you know ask me on any given day, could Rogue beat Myungshik? I'd say yeah, sure, but. Would they? Would you want to pick Rogue over the other players in the team to face Myunchik? That I'm not sure about. Now remember, uh, if Rogue loses this, it's going to be a very difficult series from oh, here yeah. on out for uh, Janir Greenwings. It'll be incredibly hard. They're going to have to rely on like an SOS reverse all kill yeah. again or Maru to somehow overcome his fears and defeat someone like Dark. But this tells me that he has something prepared. I think Rogue's going to come out here and do a very specific build to counter Myungshik. Coming out as the sniper, this is the one situation in the best of seven all kill where you know the map and the player, and you can counter him, and he doesn't know who he's going to face. That's right. That definitely can give some one of an advantage to the losing team, assuming they can pick correctly and their player's in good shape. We are now ready to go into game number two here. This is SK Telecom against Jinnair Greenwings, Myungshik against Rogue here at the SPL. In the bottom right, in the orange, Myunchik, and we are going to do the intros this time because there is no crazy <laughs> cheese to start things off. Here in the bottom left, in the green, color of his team, it is Rogue. So, interesting spawns to start. They're not going to spawn at close vertical, which would make aggression pretty nice, but it's not cross, so you, get, you could have some aggression here. Still a big map. It just kind of turns into this big two-player map from here. A lot of support here for Jin Air. Jin Air taking a stretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to make sure those uh, those lats <laughs> yeah. are all <laughs> stretched out, man. When you play, uh, whether it's StarCraft or uh, any intense game, do you get, like, uh, all the knots in your back? Do you get that? Um, I get it, like, in my shoulders, you know, in my right shoulder usually, the, the mouse, you know. In your shoulder, you mean like your trap or in your actual no, arm like, shoulder? Like oh, that's delt, interesting. You know? Both Dan and me, we got the uh, knots up like close to our neck up here. Yeah. A lot of pro gamers uh, have to visit masseuses frequently because it's just, it, <laughs> if you're playing at that APM, man, and under that amount of stress, you know, and focusing, you have no idea that you've actually been clenching your neck or your shoulders oh, yeah. for like, oh, yeah. you know, sometimes a half hour, even an hour like that. It's brutal. That's why they recommend you get up and walk around every hour or so when you are That's right. playing games or doing work or whatever. Every 30 minutes, take your eyes away from the screen and stare into the distance. Mm -hmm. Also, you want to know another little tip, Valdez, and for all my nerds watching, put a book under your monitor. Put a couple of them. Yeah. You want that monitor to be eye level. You don't want to be bending down, get that nerd neck. You don't want to be back. Ky kyphosis, kyphosis back, man. Exactly. That's what I was thinking, Tasteless. Took the words right out of your mouth, Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're both at the bottom here. Zerg is going to be expanding northbound. Protoss uh, theoretically would eventually be going expanding north, but it's Protoss expands obviously at a slower rate than the Zerg does, so um, we'll have to see. You know, for me, I'm really wondering what kind of style of play is Rogue going to do? A, a lot of pressure here on Rogue. If he loses, I would say it should be nearly impossible for the Jin Air Green Wings to come back. Yeah, it's going to take a lot out of their other two players to come out. Obviously, SOS and Maru. I don't. I don't think we're going to be seeing Creator come out anytime soon. I don't think so, man. Uh, but after using Cure and Rogue, I mean, this is like the original four that they came out with, like even last year, that they would always use all the time. 
So uh, I think it should be like that, but it's it's going to be very demanding of those two other players if Rogue does not win this one. Yeah, their back's going to hurt from carrying the team if they actually oh, yeah. pull through with this. So we have the double adept pressure build followed up with Stargate Tech. Uh, Aling smartly actually rotating around this, try to get some scouting in there. Let's see if he actually commits with this. He may end up just going up into the natural, trying to kill some workers. Although it does appear that uh, Rogue is completely prepared for adepts. Yeah, uh, even not putting any drones at the third. Looks like one now popping out, but they're going to shade away here, the Adepts. And this uh -oh. Ling even gets in. This is a one ambitious Ling. Oh, looks like he barely manages to slow it down in time, but he did see the Stargate. Uh, he does have some idea of what's going on. Yeah, that's um, pretty fantastic. You can get up your spores right in time. You can make that's a right. million drones because you know... No huge aggression is going to be coming out here anytime soon if they're committing to a lot of Phoenixes. This also appears to be a pretty modest uh, two-gate Stargate build. He actually wants to take an expansion here. He's not trying to set up for some kind of timing because we have seen variations of this where they actually just power on two bases and hope to overwhelm them. Uh, here are some members from our audience here from Finland. Welcome to the studio. Hope you guys are having a great time. And uh, is he actually going to shade those? No, he better not. Okay. Yeah. Got to be been, careful. Uh, mistake there. Well, you know, sure. it's, it's funny because when we first saw Adepts come into Legacy of the Void, people were so aggressive with him. People were so aggressive oh, yeah. with him. And they were better, you know, so it's like, okay, get them in their opponent's face, do that damage, but uh, you, you see, you definitely see the game evolve over time. That's right. Players begin to use their units a bit more smartly. And, um, well, let's see, he's got the Phoenixes out here now, starting to harass these drones. And uh, he's staying just out of range here where that uh, spore would be popping up. Uh, we see the Robotech now coming up here. So uh, right now, Mjuncic doing a complete reversal of what we saw in game one. He wants to play a very standard, yeah. solid PVZ. And I like that too, because this is a very big map. It's a four player map. If you go for some kind of tease, it makes it a lot easier for Rogue to hold off that kind of play. And he knows what kind of shape Rogue is in nowadays. And he must be very confident uh, playing with guys like Dark, playing with guys like Sue every single day. Yeah, that's like, a really good the point. Of practice that Myungshik has in macro games against Sir. Yeah, I mean, Rogue, like Rogue is of games. Exactly. And Rogue is just not on the same level, I would say, as someone like um, Especially you know, Dark. nowadays. Especially you know? nowadays, yeah. I mean, there was a period where he was definitely one of the top tier players. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I mean, Myungshik should be actually quite comfortable. Um, in this situation here. Now, we also see it's double Robo now, which has been scouted, by the way. He's sending these uh, Phoenixes back. Rogue is going to be teching up to Lurkers. Huh. And I don't know if that's a great idea because of the double Robo. I'm not sure. No Hydrarine. This is going to be very, very fast Lurkers. Uh, never quite seen a build come out this fast from the Zerg to get this many Lurkers this fast. Yeah, it's, it seems like... Uh, an eventuality that they will get lurkers in this matchup, but not at the same rate as we're seeing now here. And I, I'm wondering if this might just get hard countered here by what Protoss has to offer, you know? Yeah, it seems like Mexic for now just doing that double robo pretty standard, getting out those immortals, getting that very thick uh, death ball going for the Protoss. And, uh, ooh, good save. Yeah, still just more gates coming out. Mexic staying on three base. Yeah, and he may wait here. If you look at the way this map's shaped, uh, first of all, important to note is that Rogue actually took the um, expansion in the center left that's closer to the Protoss, although not incredibly uh, closer. It's definitely much easier for um, for Mjuncic to push that. And I think what he can do is he can force his Zerg army to try to split, and he can either attack the third base or the fourth base, depending on which one he views as more vulnerable. Yeah, uh, we do have the charge coming across here with uh, the Templar Archives almost done. And I wonder when Myungshik is going to decide to attack because he has scouted the Lurker Den complete. I, I'm, I'm not sure if he knows that this aggression is coming across the map this fast from Rogue. Well, I think he needs to keep some of his army out here. If the Lurkers are going to come up and you're turtled up too fast, they just shave off the entr entrance point of your base. Now, note, there are no sentries in this army, so it's going to be a head-on, uh, you know, Big fight here in the middle of the ground. Now, if you can get a good surround here on those lurkers, their uh, their spines can't do anywhere near as much damage. But he decides to back up. You know that's one thing about lurkers is if you can fight them, 
um, and force their spines to spread out in every direction, you're pretty much going to win every time as long as you have a reasonable army composition. But if your army's bunched together and their lurkers are bunched together and you just hit all those spines, everything dies. Yeah. Uh, interesting fight there. Interesting position from Rogue to go and uh, morph those there in the middle of the map. Nice yeah. pickup by uh, <laughs> Myungshik to spot that. And... I mean, Rogue's up to 69 drones at this point. He has four bases. I think he has all the economy he could want. I wonder when he's going to make that transition into Hive or if he's just going to stick on this composition for now, especially at these positions. He can definitely continue the pressure and keep young on three bases for a while. Let's let's go ahead and see um, how Myunchik does with the Immortals. You're, you're making the Immortals the whole game. It's kind of like when Terran loses all of his medevacs or, or tanks uh, in some instances, like if you're mecking. If he can keep these Immortals alive, he can have a really good engage. The combination of Psystorm and Immortals, no, no sentries again here. Um, I yeah. thought he might have gotten one just for the Guardian Shield, but um, yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of damage. You can really push out and uh, fight a Zerg head on. Now, this is not what we're used to see traditionally in StarCraft 2 PvZ. We we're always used to the idea that the Protoss would have to rely on the sentries and try to cut up the Zerg army with force fields yeah. and engage a fight, but this is a different style. And I like the way Myunchik's approaching this. I think he's still got a very good shot of winning this game. Also note, he's actually expanding towards the Zerg here, indicating that he is going to, no matter what, eventually do a push here. He's not going to try to turtle this out and outlast the Zerg. Yeah, I think he wants to eventually attack here. As you were saying, get those Immortals out, get your Storm out, and get that fantastic composition. He's going to have plus two and a Warp Prism, and he's definitely moving to go for this. Uh, still no Nexus, and he wants to come in for the attack. And all he's the Lurkers are on the right. Yeah, he's going to be going around the Lurkers here. And this means that Protoss can keep retreating from the Lurkers and actually go up into the second. Rogue oh is my not God. sure what this to do. This is fantastic. He's hitting from two angles. Oh, but for some reason, the <laughs> Zelts are getting pulled through. <laughs> I was exciting for a second, and then uh, he just yoinked him right through there. Um, but the Lurkers can't do anything to help defend. They're out of position. This can only mean that Rogue is going to try to do a huge counterattack. It's going to be a bit of a base trade. That's what we're going to get here. All of a sudden, Rogue, he's like, okay, you want to attack me? I'll come attack you. I've got, what do I have, 13 Lurkers? 16 Lurkers now on the ramp. Okay, he's going to be pushing in here. It's going to be a matter of who can kill who quicker here. Note that a lot of the critical tech here is actually at the second base. Also important to note, there are more bases right now for Rogue, more area that uh, uh, Myunchik will have to destroy if he wants to win this game. We do not We do see, I believe, on the mini-map, it's Probes headed northbound right now to try to hide yep. somewhere else. A good amount of minerals here for both parties, so they definitely can remake. Oh, he's actually going to recall down to the third base and try to go. Ah! But look at this, the Lurkers in position. Goodbye, Probes. He's continuing to come in now, uh, doing so much damage here to the main. Uh, let's keep in mind, there's just one more net. No, no, two more nexuses, excuse me, remaining here for Myunchik. There's two more hatches here. Um, for uh, Rogue, actually that's a pretty big catch to even get that one drone, by the way. It's 12 probes to 21 drones. Uh, I believe the majority of the drones right now are at this expansion where the Archons are headed towards. Yeah, they're actually still Oh, no, mining. I'm sorry. They're, a lot of them are over here. He might, they might do, we see this occasionally in uh, base trades where they swap mains. It looks kind of funny. Or swap where, where the other yeah. expansions would have been. And that's what we're going to have here. He's not going to take the main in this case because it's too mineral depleted, but he will take the natural. Well, Myungsik needs to get down an Exus sometime soon. He still hasn't gone for it. There oh, it is. There it's, it is. Uh, Wait. Not at a... Uh, okay, he's going to well, make two of them not he, near the minerals. Yeah, that's because he, he's hoping... Well, the thing is, it didn't make sense for him to make it by the ramp because he's going to be scouted there anyways. It actually is better if he just makes an Exus in an expansion. Um, now, let's also keep in mind, Lurkers are not very mobile units. Okay, and Phoenixes, by the way, guys, can pick them up. There are not a ton of Hydras remaining here. Um, yeah, let me see exactly how many. There's nine, okay, to four Phoenixes, and there's still six High Templar. They're going to have lots of Storms, double on each of them, and four Archons, ten Immortals, and eight Zealots. So still a very strong army for the Protoss. You just have to engage it correctly. I wonder if he could actually sit back and just try storming. Um, I don't know if Zerg has the opportunity to go around, but it's a little bit scary here for Protoss because he's sending his everything uh, down. And uh, that means if he, there's a counterattack here, I'm not sure what he can do. There's no Mothership Core, right? Yeah, there's no Mothership Core. Yeah. Okay. Um, most of the creep has been depleted. That expansion is up and running. Uh, eight drones to two probes. That's a pretty big difference. Oh, yeah. He's trying to send a few lings around here to maybe... Um, 
get some of these, uh, get, you know, the would-be probes of this expansion. But I am a little bit scared here for uh, for the Zerg. This push looks pretty scary. I mean, granted, lurkers can hold off armies for days. Storm only costs mana, guys. He's got one Oracle too, which is going to be yeah. his only detection, which right. is very important because you're going to need that to uh, if you want to attack the lurkers without Storm. You're going to need detection here, and there we go. Okay. Detects the majority oh, of the lurkers. Oh, this is there. so sick! Look at this. He's going to make a nexus right here, so he can't even lose to a counterattack. That is so smart. Okay, here we go. The storms are going to push forward. Okay, one big storm there. Now, uh, at the highest level, you ideally want to unbro your lurkers the moment they're stormed and run out because they'll take just the slightest bit less damage. Um, and it looks like, okay, he does lose one. Every lurker is so precious right now, by the way. Oh, it looks like he's going to go, gonna for, go it. for it. Storms are blanketing down so many lurkers back here. Phoenix is picking up a large number of these lurkers and continue to come forward. And it looks like Mjotschik is going to do it. Rogue loses in the base trade. GG. SK Telecom with a 2-0 lead. Mjotschik is kicking ass, guys. Mjotschik doing it two in a row. We were questioning it at first, but now we're not. <laughs> two no, we row. are not. Two fantastic games, too. One prepared cheese for the guy he knew he was playing, and then a very, very solid macro game against Rogue, shutting him out. And now Jin is only down to two players, and it's looking pretty grim. Man, oh man. Myunchik is not stopping anytime soon. I think this means it's time for Jinnier Greenwings to start pulling out the big guns. The big boys got to come out. I think it's got to be either SOS or Maru that's coming out here. Yeah. Um, we do have Orbital Shipyard for game three and Prion Terraces for game four. So, I mean, Orbital I don't know. Shipyard, maybe maybe I don't... you send out a Protoss here first. You send out SOS for Orbital and Prion. Yeah, I mean, PvP is still a shaky matchup, but SOS is one of the best around. I don't, I can't imagine Myunchik gets as good practice against players like SOS. Yeah. Also, Olrena, I feel like, would be pretty good for SOS. And Dust Towers, he's doing quite well against Terrence on that map. So maybe you save him for those two last maps. That's going to be game six and seven. Maybe you send out Maru first for I think probably Maru, Lurilac. if I had to bet, probably Maru. Um, but that means we're immediately going to have a Zerg pick if Morrow wins and beats Mianchik, and that's going to mean that it would then, uh, presumably, if, if Morrow is as bad against Zerg as he says he is, it would then be a 3-1 yeah. uh, after the next two matches. And, and then you have either Sue or Dark to play up against SOS, which you're yeah. not too uncomfortable with, to be yeah. honest, you know? Yeah, really like an SKT's position right now. Using a guy like Myungshik, a guy we don't get to see too often out here. He's only 0-1 for round one of Pro League. But uh, he's making his mark tonight, that's for sure. Man, this is a very special night for Myungshik. Let's see who they're going to pick. But uh, I believe we're going to have a uh, short interview over here. This is the chairman of Casper. 국제 이스포츠 연맹의 전병원 회장님 자리해 주셨습니다. 큰 박수로 환영해 주세요. 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. Hello, 반갑습니다. very nice to meet you. 네, 부산 캐스파 코업 결승 현장에 작년에 뵙고 정말 오랜만에 인사드리는 것 같은데요. So, we were at the Casper Cup Finals in Busan last year. 이스포츠 팬들에게 먼저 인사 부탁드리겠습니다. 예, 작년 결승 전에 뵙고 오랜만에 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 인사 부탁드리겠 어, 좀 황당한 일을 당했죠. 어, 이른바 어, 기습 러시를 당한 right 아, 제가 아, 그런 그 여러 가지 복잡한 신경에 한번, 아, 우리 e스포츠 팬 여러분들의 여기에 so 가득 찬 아, right 현장에 있게 되니까 아, 제 마음도 힐링이 되고 uh, 더더욱이 always, uh, 이 e스포츠를 사랑하는 분들과 흔들림 없이 변화 없이 함께 되겠다는 그런 새, 새로운 생각과 각오를 다집니다. 함께 주시는 우리 e스포츠 팬 여러분들 그리고 또 TV를 통해서 온라인을 통해서 함께 주신 우리 e스포츠 팬 여러분들께 다시 한번 새롭게 에너지를 충전하면서 다시 한번 반갑고 감사합니다. 
네, 이 스포츠에 대한 회장님의 사랑 저 역시 더욱더 본받아야 될것 같은데요. 이제 따뜻한 봄바람이 불고 있습니다. 봄바람과 함께 또 다양한 e 스포츠 이벤트를 so 준비되어 있다고 들었어요. Yeah. 이 자리에서 힌트 요청드려도 Lots 될까요? Yeah, yeah, 우선 뭐 제가 캐스파 회장에 취임을 하면서 어, 공약으로 내세웠던 Since I am the chairman 아, 이, of CASPA 저, 어, 가족 e스포츠 페스티벌이 아, 5월 달로 예정이 되어 있고요. 또 캐스파 컵도 5월 달에 예정이 되어 있습니다. 아, 이번 그, 어, 캐스파 컵이나 아, 가족 e스포�ü 어, 페스티벌은 아, 더 많은 On 다양한 May, 종목을 통해서 더 풍성하게 예, 준비를 아, 하고 있는 것으로 어, 알고 있습니다. 아, 또 특히 아, 우리 국제적으로 어, e스포츠로서 아, 국가 아, 대항전인 유일한 아, 그 대회인 아, ISF 월드 챔피언십도 어, 10월 달 인도네시아 자카르타에서 아, 준비가 아, 되고 있습니다. 아, 또 특히 금년에는 아, 우리 글로벌 e스포츠 인재 양성을 위해서 특별히 초점을 맞추어서 어, 신경 쓸 생각이고요. 아, 그런 차원에서 아, 국제 에, 스포츠 어, 기구들과 아, 보다 더 어, 다양한 그런 협력과 아, 접촉을 유지할 생각입니다. 아, 그리고 이제 무엇보다도 네. 우리 e스포츠가 2016년도에는 아, 보다 여가 문화로서 대중적인 기반을 자리 잡도록 한 단계 업그레이드 시키는 노력을 해 나갈 것이라는 말씀을 드리고 아울러서 또 우리 e스포츠가 더 발전할 수 있도록 아, 프로와 아, 아마추어를 아, 연결하는 아, 보다 아, 생태계를 건강하게 활력 있게 발전시키는 Korea, 좋은 해로 어, 맞이할 수 있도록 아, 우리 협회 임원들과 또 팀들과 또 e스포츠 so 팬 여러분들과 year, 선수 여러분들과 힘을 합쳐서 이렇게 나가도록 하겠습니다. So 많이 지켜봐 events. 주시고 함께 응원과 협력을 당부드립니다. And 네, 벌써부터 올 한해 e스포츠의 성장과 발전이 되었지 기대되는데요. 사장님 마지막으로 멋진 경기 펼쳐줄 진에어와 SKT 선수들에게 응원의 한 말씀 부탁드립니다. 예, 진에어와 SKT 우리 팀들은 uh, 저에게는 특별한 인연을 갖고 있는 팀이어서 아, 특히, 특히 오늘 Both teams, they have special meanings to me. They've got a long history, especially here at Pro League. Especially here at Pro League. We're really looking for some great games, some awesome strategies. And I hope this final is very enjoyable for all of you that are watching. We hope this final is very enjoyable for all of you that are watching. 보답을 해 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. 저도 늘 함께 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 역시 선수들의 힘찬 경기 응원하도록 하겠습니다. 다시 한번 뜨거운 말씀 부탁드립니다. 이렇게 정정한 국제연맹 회장님과의 인터뷰만 하면 됩니다. 이렇게 정정한 국제연맹 회장님과의 인터뷰만 하면 됩니다.